Dear brothers and sisters, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are joining from. Pache <laughs> Bene, and I'm very happy, uh, very happy feast of Saint uh, of Saint Joseph. Welcome all to this uh, social justice uh, stations of the cross organized by the Franciscans International. Just a few instructions before uh, we, we start. We have simultaneous translations. And in order to access this, uh, kindly go on the bottom of your screen uh, on the right side and select your language. So we have Italian, uh, we have Portuguese, uh, we also have Spanish and German available for you. So just go on the bottom of your screen and select the language that you are comfortable with. Well, the Stations of the Cross uh, that we usually pray during the season of Lent helps us reflect on the mystery of the suffering and death of Jesus in an intimate way. <clears throat> the social justice stations, the social justice stations of the cross helps us to reflect more specifically uh, on following the footsteps of Jesus in solidarity with those who are suffering due to lack of human rights, sickness, extreme poverty, conflict, um, extreme weather, pollution, and others. As Franciscans, we are challenged to think about how we can honor Christ's sacrifice by offering our souls to the healing and repair of the world God sent his son to save. We are called not only to pray and fast, but also reach out to work to the vulnerable and the poor through our mission of advocacy and, uh, and service at the local and international levels. Through this, we achieve true inner conversion of heart as we seek to follow Christ's will more faithfully. <clears throat> the stations will focus on specific thematic issues within the mission of the Franciscan International and during these stations, we'll share real experiences of people working in the grassroots and collaborating with the Franciscans International to do advocacy at the UN. So to begin, we'll start with a prayer. <clears throat> in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Lord Jesus Christ, source of love, peace, justice, and comfort of the afflicted. Be with us today as we journey in the footsteps of Jesus as he goes to his suffering and death. As we reflect on the suffering of Jesus, help us to feel the pain and humiliation that he felt so that we may be moved by the great sacrifice he made for all humanity. Send us your spirit to enter into our hearts so that with the compassion, we may listen and respond to the plight of others who carry burdens, crosses, despair, and loss of dignity. Send your spirit to be with us as we travel this journey together. I work in our hearts that we may accept your challenge to create the world anew. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now we'll move to the first station. We have some music first and then we move to the first station. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. 
Indigenous and Human Rights in West Papua. Pile addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they sought out, crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I found in him no crime deserving death. I will therefore cast his him and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, whom they asked for, but Jesus he delivered up to their will. The members of Sanhedrin did not need a lengthy discussion to come to a decision. The matter had long been settled. Jesus must die. The leaders of the Indonesian nation no longer need to listen to the Papuan people. The Jakarta Papua dialogue or other solution that try to undermine the country's sovereignty will be crushed, even though it violates human rights. Jesus' hasty condemnation does embrace the easy equations, the superficial judgment of the crowd, the, ins the insinuations and the prejudice with hardened hearts and create a culture of rations and exclusion. The condemn to death for Papuan has started since the Act of Free Choice 1969. This is if we agree with the opinion that the root of the problem in Papua is a political problem, namely the Act of Free Choice 1969. This becomes the root and hence the beginning of the way of the cross for Papuans in all areas of life. The way of the cross is in the civil sector with the increasingly marginalized indigenous Papuans due to the flow of transmigration and the control of strategic positions and determinants of public policies by immigrants. The way of the cross in the field of education with many illiterates and schools without teachers. The way of the cross in the economic sector with a stronger consumptive mentality because the production and distribution system is controlled by immigrants, which result in the determination of Papua as the poorest province in Indonesia in 2020, which also shows that special autonomy does not have significant impact on welfare Papuan people. The way of the cross in the culture field with the loss of local wisdom and original identity of Papua due to the Indonesian process or marginalization. The way of the cross in the field of the integrity of creation through mining, illegal logging, to the fleeing of Papua from the villages of residents since ancient times due to the prolonged conflict between the Indonesian National Army and the West Papua National Liberation Army of the Free Papua Organization. The case in Nduga in Tanjaya is a clear example of a policy with a condemn to death for Papuans, a policy that was adopted only by the leaders without listening to the voices of Papuans, social community organizations, the church, and even the international community. Since the murder of, the mar, the murder of Pastor Jeremia Zanambani in September 2020, whose case was also raised by the Franciscan International at the Human Rights Council 45th session in Geneva, Switzerland on September 2020, to this day, March 6, 2021, there are still many residents in Duga who have fled their villages. They fled to the churches and to other districts such as Vamena, Timika, Yahukimo, and Lanijaya. The Catholic Church 
was represented by Pastor Justinus Rahanger, Pastor of the San Michael Bilogia, Sugapa District in Tanjaya Regency, and the sisters who worked there provided shelter for the refugees. In addition, leaders of the Catholic Church in Papua from five dioceses in Papua have called for an approach release on February 27, 2021, that acts of violence by the Indonesian National Army and the West Papua National Liberation Army of Free Papua Organization are avoided and stopped so that civil society will no longer be victims. Despite the uproar, maybe we also glimpse bitches among the Papuan people. Perhaps we too are among Indonesian people who are shouting for Jesus and for them to be crucified, being racist towards them and treating them like nobody, blind to the evil of which we are capable of. Let us pray. Lord, you are familiar with the suffering and the pain of your children doesn't escape your gaze of compassion. We pray for the people in West Papua who like you are condemned to death and being treated unfairly. Come to the aid of the people suffering in West Papua. We pray for the ones who have been oppressed and in fear for so long. We pray for those in power who are giving the orders of violence out of greed or fear uh, of scarcity or prejudice. May your kingdom of justice, peace, joy, and forgiveness transform the situation through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will move to the second station as we hear the music in the background. In this station, the second station, Jesus carries his cross. The theme of this station is migrants and refugees. And uh, to lead this station, I'll uh, have Sister Diana from Mexico. The Franciscans International addresses uh, the issues of uh, refugees and migrants at the UN. Let us now hear more in, de in, in, in details from Sister Diana uh, from Mexico. Welcome, Sister. Thank you. Segunda estación. Jesús carga con la cruz hacia el Monte Calvario. Hoy miles de migrantes y refugiados centroamericanos cargan con la cruz que el sistema corrupto les ha impuesto. Señor Jesús, te pedimos por los migrantes y refugiados que se ven forzados a desplazarse a causa de las desigualdades sociales, la violencia e injusticias. Te adoramos, oh Cristo, y te bendecimos, porque por tu santa cruz redimiste al mundo. De la buena noticia según San Juan. Entonces Pilato les entregó a Jesús para que fuera crucificado. Ellos se apoderaron de Jesús. Él mismo llevaba la cruz a cuestas, y salió a un lugar llamado la calavera, que en hebreo quiere decir Gólgota. Al igual que Pilato obligó injustamente a Jesús a cargar la cruz camino al Calvario, hoy después de más de dos mil años, los gobiernos centroamericanos condenan a miles de personas a cargar injustamente una pesada cruz y emprender un camino de suplicio 
en el que muchos encuentran la muerte a manos del crimen organizado. Cargar la cruz y emprender el camino para salvar la vida, buscar mejores condiciones de vida, huir de la violencia, es sin duda una decisión dolorosa para los migrantes y refugiados, en la que seguramente más de alguno habrá pedido en su angustia a Dios como lo hizo Jesús. Si es posible, aparta de mí este cáliz. Sin embargo, al igual que Jesús, no tienen otra alternativa, ya que la cruz no es opción, sino imposición. Miles de migrantes y refugiados recorren cada día el camino del Calvario, camino lleno de ultrajes, de injusticias, de dolor, incertidumbre, muerte, violaciones a sus derechos, discriminación, hambre, frío, calor, etcétera, etcétera. Vemos familias completas, niños, niñas, grupos pequeños y caravanas completas de migrantes y refugiados que cargan con su cruz en busca de ayuda humanitaria y protección a sus derechos. Oración. Perdón, Señor, por la indiferencia ante el dolor que viven los migrantes y refugiados ante el peso de la cruz que les es impuesta por las injusticias en sus países. Perdón, Señor, por la falta de solidaridad, la indiferencia y los juicios que hacemos en, ante la violencia que viven migrantes y refugiados en los países de tránsito y destino. Danos la gracia de ver tu rostro sufriente en cada persona migrante y refugiada, que con valentía les ayudemos a cargar su cruz. Amén. Thank you, Sister Diana. Love a short moments of reflection and background music now, and then we'll move to the third station. third station, Jesus falls for the first time, and we adore you, Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The theme of this station is peace and justice in Cameroon, and this station will be led by Father Joseph Dufe, an OFM cap capuchin from Cameroon political crisis in Cameroon has witnessed a series of falls for individuals, families, institutions, Ecclesiastical bodies, entire villages. The Franciscans International stands with the many people who are suffering there due to the injustices, lack of human rights, and lack of peace. We now welcome Father Joseph to lead us in this station. Welcome, Father. Each and every one of us has experienced a series of falls, be they moral and physical falls. And we have risen up and continued, though often without the guarantee that we will not fall again. The first fall of the staggering child pulls the attention of the observing mother and father. The first fall of any person is always a shocking moment. It takes us unawares. We struggle to rise up with all the limited resources that we have. Sometimes we have had to cry for external help 
which may come or not. And when it does, we welcome it gladly. But when it doesn't, we must make an extra effort to rise up and continue, always wishing never to fall again. The first fall of our Lord, which was followed by his rising up and going on towards the last phase of his earthly ministry, shows us that falling is not the matter, but it is the rising. Not much effort is expended in falling, for we fall under gravity naturally. The effort is rather needed in the rising process. It is when we get up from our fallen state that we regain the motive for and the redefinition of our mission. It is then that we appreciate our strength. Subsequently, Jesus would fall a second and then a third time. And each time he will rise and continue. In the end, he would rise to the highest height, right up there, pinned on the cross. And from there, he would be made to fall into the tomb and be sealed. It would look to many, even including his disciples, as if that is the end. But that would not be it. The political crisis in Cameroon, which began towards the end of 2016, has witnessed a series of falls. Falls for individuals, for families, institutions, ecclesial bodies, entire villages, etc. Some people have struggled with the suffering and then they have given up. Human life has been wasted, wasted without any shame, never to be found again. Structures that have for long been the pride of a people have been reduced to ruins, never to be found again. A flashback makes many ask, how and why did it all begin? A look at where they stand makes them wonder, how did we ever get here? A gaze into the future, which seems bleak, makes everyone ask, where are we heading to? The passion of Christ, with all its faults and tribulations, did not blur his vision of Easter. Neither should it blur the hope of the people of Cameroon. They cry for a genuine, authentic, and inclusive dialogue, one void of personal and partisan benefits, continues to echo from the lips of every man of peace. It is the homeland cry. It is the cry of international bodies. It is the cry of Franciscans International. Even when our cry seems to fall to the ground with us, we are not going to give up. Let us rise and continue. For in the end, the risen Lord, who is the main hope of the suffering people of Cameroon, would lift his people up and there would be peace. Let us pray. Lord of justice and compassion, we pray for peace, justice, and a sense of respect for human life in Cameroon. May there be dialogue and respect for human rights amidst the current difficult situation. Help the many people who have suffered violence, injury, destruction of property and displacement to rise again the way you did after falling with the cross the first time. Amen. Thank you, Brother Joseph. We now welcome you for a moment of reflection and as we pray for brothers and sisters in Cameroon. Thank you. Default station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore your Christ and we bless you because, because yeah. by your holy cross, yes. you have redeemed the world. The theme of this station is human trafficking and will be led by Father Peter OFM from Germany. 
in its advocacy work, the Franciscans International and JP groups work to end human trafficking and modern day slavery around the world. Brother Peter, as I said, an OFM friar will walk us uh, through this uh, station to help us to be in solidarity with those suffering due to these injustices around the world. Welcome, Brother Peter. Thank you. Jesus' encounter with his mother is filled with heartfelt love and deep pain at the same time. She sees how he is despised, ostracized, rejected by his own people, and handed over to the terrible death of a criminal. He feels her pain, and only love can carry through the darkness of abandonment. The barriers of rejection make many despair who want to enter Europe, some at the border fences that Europe has built around itself, and others who entrust themselves to traffickers and criminal gangs to cross these borders. This does not only apply to the refugees who try to cross the Mediterranean on the escape routes and who sometimes perish there, sometimes are brought back to Africa in misery and hopelessness. This also applies to the countless women and girls, especially from Eastern Europe, who see their only hope for a decent life in a professional future in Western Europe. They often sacrifice a lot of money for this and entrust themselves to people who promise them this life. Instead, however, their passports are taken from them on the way before they cross the borders. And after arriving on the spot, they find themselves against their will in the Brussels, where, illegally as they are here, they have to work as sex slaves. Given the open borders within European Union, they are often moved from one place to another, from one country to another, to work in Brussels or illegal establishments. The fear of illegality often prevents them from fleeing. In Germany in particular, very permissive laws are conducive to this kind of human trafficking. In them, in all the many who, in search of a new, dignified life, entrust themselves to traffickers and criminal gangs, who ultimately see them only as a profit-making human material, in all of them, we encounter the cross-bearing Jesus, whose pain seeks the gaze of the mother. In them, he suffers today. In them, he also looks at us. In their suffering, his cross is carried out again today. Let us pray. Dear Lord and brother Jesus, on your way to the cross, you have met your mother. Your eyes and her eyes were full of sorrow and love. She has shared your way to suffering and she has behold you in her heart. So many people among us cry for, for they are victims of human trafficking, but our ears and eyes so often are closed. We ask you to hear their cry and make them meet people who love and have mercy with them. Make our hearts change 
so that we see your tortured face in them as your mother did when she saw you on the way to the cross. For them and for us, we pray to you, our brother and Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Peter. Now I'll invite you for a moment of silence and uh, reflection as we continue praying for the many victims of human trafficking around the world. The fifth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The theme of this station is COVID pandemic, caregivers, and other forgotten diseases. The COVID pandemic has exposed the inadequacies and injustice of our present political, economic, and health systems. The Franciscans International is in solidarity and prayer for all those suffering due to this pandemic. Brother Angel, an OFM a friar from the Philippines, will lead us in this station. Welcome, brother. As COVID-19 strikes the world, people rise together to counter it. At the forefront of the fight against the virus are our healthcare workers and various frontliners. Daily, they face the hazard of infection with their mantra. We go to work for you. Please stay at home for us. Healthcare workers who directly work with COVID positive patients are outnumbered. And due to their first time exposure, some staff require quarantine themselves reducing their numbers. Another big challenge for frontliners is the lack of medical supplies, including personal protective equipment. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed the inadequacies and injustices of our present political, economic, and health systems. We laud our brave healthcare professional for tirelessly taking care of our COVID-19 patients in spite of the great risk to life and family. We applaud our other essential frontliners for helping ensure the fulfillment of the basic needs of communities. We commend those government agencies and officials whose efforts mitigated the effects of the pandemic on their constituents. We acknowledge with gratitude those business owners and leaders who cared for their workers and step up to fill gaps in needed supplies and service delivery. However, much remains to be done. From the national to local levels, particularly for our more vulnerable sectors. Try envisioning yourself as a frontliner, perhaps a security guard, a grocery cashier, a health worker, a garbage collector, or a police officer at the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Exhausted after a 10-hour shift with no hazard pay, trekking for several kilometers from the drop-off point of your shuttle bus, and yet you are evicted from your boarding house of fears that you contacted COVID-19. You tune into the news or scheme through your Facebook news feed and see tales of neglect and discrimination against your fellow health workers and those who succumb to the virus. Discriminatory acts such as impetus expulsion from the rented flats or dormitories, cyberbullying, doxing, barring from establishments, denying entry to their village or homes, refusal from receiving relief goods, and even sneering from villagers and authorities has been the prevalent infectious disease burdening frontliners from infected countries. In this situation, Pope Francis reminds us that our call to mission is the invitation to step out of ourselves for love of God and neighbor. It is the mission 
that God entrusts to each one of us that leads us from fear and introspection to a renewed realization that we find ourselves precisely when we give ourselves to others. The Pope is helping us to answer the question, where is God during this pandemic crisis? God is present in our frontliners. Our frontliners are always on the move. He said, it is neither a program nor an enterprise to be carried out by sheer force of will, but rather follows the prompting of the Holy Spirit who pushes you and carries you. As brothers and sisters, seeing the reality that our frontliners responding to this pandemic crisis, we must always respond to God's call of serving the least, the lost, and the last at all times, and silence ourselves like our seraphic father Francis, who would always say, Brothers, let us begin again, for until now, we have done little. There are those who, like Veronica, risk their own lives to show kindness to the sick, vulnerable, and outcasts of the 16.8 million healthcare workers on the front lines. The majority are inadequately protected. In this station, we are invited to remember the healthcare workers and other essential workers who are putting their own lives at risk to help others. On the way to Golgotha, there are many men and women of our time that we cannot ignore, who are tried by pains and sufferings, and some are indifferent and competitous, making this poverty of theirs our own. We should identify their faces and look at them with a gaze full of love and mercy, just as Jesus did, to avoid mixing with an anonymous crowd or being indifferent spectators. Let us hear the silent cry of Jesus, who asks us to dry his bloody face in that of our brothers and sisters, made unrecognizable for violence or contempt or for being abandoned to their solitude like the sick and vulnerable to coronavirus. Like Veronica, who with the audacity of, of a loving and compassionate person, breaking the safety cord, reached Jesus and managed to console him with a simple gesture, but full of tenderness and piety. So too, we should break the change of our pattern and fears and let ourselves do the acts of pure charity. Let us pray. As COVID-19 Dear Jesus, suddenly a woman comes out of the crowd. Her name is Veronica. You can see how she cares for you as she takes a cloth and begins to wipe the blood and sweat from your face. She cannot do much, but she offers the most tender act of charity. Help us to be like her, willing and daring to reach out and to help like what our frontliners are doing amid this pandemic. We pray for them that they may minister to the sick with confidence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. Forgive us for the many times we have neglected them as we do not see you in them. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. Forgive us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Angel. And I invite you for a moment of silence, prayer, to be in solidarity with those who suffered you through the pandemic.
the sixth station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The theme of this station is human rights and extreme poverty. One of the major Franciscan charism is to leave the evangelical virtue of poverty, but also stand against the injustice of extreme poverty as a human rights issue. Franciscans International and many Franciscan groups around the world work against and stand with the people living in extreme poverty. Sister Celestine from Kenya will help us reflect on this station. Welcome, Sister. Thank you. Jesus falls under the heavy weight of sorrow for a second time. Christ falls because he lives among us still, sharing the pain of our destitute brothers and sisters living in extreme poverty. It is the face of Christ suffering in the experience of every person who suffers from poverty in Kenya and globally. Although the education rate in Kenya is high at 84%, those living in extreme poverty is still at 36%. The 2010 Kenyan constitution gave hope of strong protections for social and economic rights. However, its implementation has been slow and languid. In its efforts to address the issue of poverty, the government has received significant help from international institutions. Nevertheless, poverty level remains high due to corruption, disregard for life, disregard for human dignity, and respect of all its citizens as people of equal rights. Kenya's inequality and poverty line is reflected by share of social services and income varying among different segments of its populace. As a result, there are still many ways Jesus falls in order to meet the poor in their humbled low state, falling to where they are trampled upon and smelling like them with a heavy heart, weighed down by sorrow. In Kenya, the face of Jesus' suffering is seen when poverty erodes and nullifies economic and social rights of the people. When the deprived humanity dies prematurely for lack of policies that directly impact the vulnerable of society. Policies and legal protections such as preferential love and option for the poor and access to universal healthcare are not executed thereby diminishing responsibilities toward the poor. With 55% of workers lacking decent salary and remuneration because government structures turn a blind eye at exploitation of the poor by companies. When over 19 million Kenyans lack clean and safe drinking water and over 10 million Kenyans live in slums and lack adequate housing, Jesus falls. When orphan children are left to fend by themselves, Jesus falls. When children in slums like Kibira, Mukuru Kwa Michael, Mukuru Kwa Njenga, Korokosho, Madare Valley, among others, are unable to access quality education, Jesus falls. When society does little to correct these social ills, Jesus falls. The question is, are we part of those who make Jesus fall in the poor again and again? How do we alleviate this painful suffering of humanity? The cruelty with which Jesus is treated and trampled underfoot is the same way we treat those in extreme poverty. Let us pray. Lord, grant us strength of purpose to rise from our fall, the fall of indifference, 
of exclusion, of marginalization, of social economic classes, to a generative society faithfully advocating for a just world, that we may not give up in the imperative of respecting human life and dignity. Make us strong advocates of justice and unity in a space where these are rare. Lord Jesus, strengthen us to rise after a fall till we ensure our realization of human dignity, leaving no one behind. Make us instruments of peace and change in advocating for equality in social and economic spheres that will transform the sorrow of an indignified humanity living in extreme poverty in Kenya and around the world. And the sorrow of humanity suffering emotional, psychological, and all the interlocking systemic injustices into a harmonized, peaceful world where all live in justice. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Celeste. And now we invite you for a short moment of reflection <clears throat> and prayer. The seventh station and the last one. Jesus is stripped of his clothes. We adore you, Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The theme of this station is mining and extractive industries. In this station of the cross, we see Jesus in so many of our brothers and sisters and all Mother Earth stripped of their rights and dignity. As Franciscans International, in collaboration with other Franciscans, we are working to address the issue of mining and the extractive industries. We now welcome Igor from Brazil to have, help us reflect on this station. Welcome, Igor. Thank you, Brother Ben. What's the price of life? This is the first question that comes to mind when we remember all the victims of mining and extractive industries. They are local communities, families, local biodiversity, which are impacted in so many different ways. They are mass victims, like the victims of the Valley Company in Brumadinho, Brazil, where a mining dam collapsed. 272 people died and 11 are still missing but also victims who lose their lives little by little, victims of conflicts in the territories, displaced communities, contamination and disease, communities that suffer day after day. The bishops of Latin America wrote, by extractivism, we understand an unbridled tendency of the economic system to convert the goods of nature into capital. The action of extracting the greatest amount of materials in its shortest possible time, converting them into a raw materials and inputs that industry will use, then will then be transformed into products and service that others will market. Society will consume, and then nature itself will receive it from the polluting waste in form of polluting waste. That is the consumerist loop that is being generated in ever greater speed and ever greater risk. risk. In, an in an economy where profit, the god of money, dominates everything and everyone, we see many human rights violations, many ways of violence against people and against nature, where acts against life and human dignity are justified for the health of the economy. As we reflect on the passion of Christ, 
we remember that no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. On the other hand, it's important to recognize, pray and support the resistance that flourishes in the territories. There are many communities that organize themselves to defend their rights. Civil society organizations that from local to global level fight for justice. Many initiatives that come together to respond to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. In this station of the cross, we see Jesus and so many brothers and sisters stripped of their rights and dignity. As Pope Francis said, each and every person is precious before God's eyes and his or her fundamental human rights are sacred and inalienable, irrespective of one's social or economic status. We hope that in this Lenten time, we can reflect on the true meaning of our faith and renew our commitment to the defense of the excluded and marginalized without forgetting that our mother earth has become the poorest and the most oppressed among us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are stripped of your clothes to be nailed on the cross. See how the land is being stripped of its materials due to human rights greed and lack of care. May you inspire our leaders and business people to listen to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Igor. We have now come to the end of this social justice and, and the Stations of the Cross as organized by the Franciscans International. These specific stations were selected according to the thematic issues that the FI is mostly engaged on. We continue praying for justice, peace, and integrity of creation around the world. Now, before we finish, I invite uh, Father Marcus, our executive director, to give us a word and the concluding prayer and blessing. I thank you. Pache Bene. So let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Lord, make me an advocate of all those who are discriminated against and excluded. Where people are discriminated against because of their race, let me advocate for fraternity where people are disadvantaged or persecuted because of their religion, let me advocate for religious freedom. Where people are discriminated against because of their sexual orientation or gender identity, let me advocate for equality and their dignity. Where people are treated as slaves, let me advocate for their freedom. Where people are migrating and seeking refuge, let me advocate for their protection and security. Where people are evicted from their land and home, let me advocate for compensation. Where people exploit the resources of the earth for their private interests, let me advocate for justice and solidarity. Where our Mother Earth is damaged and polluted, let me advocate for the protection and respect of creation. Where peoples and nations fight against each other, let me advocate for peace and reconciliation. Because it is you 
who is present in our sisters and brothers. It is you who gave us an inalienable dignity as you creatures. Together with Jesus, our Lord and brother, we pray to you, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. At the end of our prayer and reflection, I would like to thank, first of all, you, sisters and brothers, that you shared with us a little bit of your experience and your reflection in this context of the Stations of the Cross. I also want to especially thank you that you helped us by translating the different reflections. And I would like to thank Ben and Thomas from FI who organized it and also helped us with all the technical setup. Thanks to everyone for participating and joining us in this prayer. And then I wish you a blessed um, Holy Week and the joy and the hope of the Feast of Easter. Thank you. Thank you. As you exit, please leave a word in the chat. Leave a word of gratitude in the chat. Just write and we'll be very grateful. Thank you. God bless you. We'll finish with the music in the background as we exit. Thank you. <clears throat>